engine is always the most difficult problem for all types of rockets, and with the largest and most powerful rocket-like SpaceX Starship, the difficulty increases many times over. Because, unlike any other operational rocket engine, Starship's Raptor engine runs on a full-flow combustion cycle that is so hard to develop, not to mention that Raptor is always pushed to its limitations to be better. So, making Raptor reliable is a top priority in helping the vehicle reach orbit. In Flight 2, we witnessed this component work pretty well, given that 33 Raptor engines on Super Heavy Booster completed a full duration burn during ascent, and the upper stage's six Raptors carried the vehicle close to orbit. However, the failures on Raptor still occurred leading to the explosion in both stages. This forced SpaceX to devise better solutions to avoid this accident from being repeated in Flight 3. Genius! SpaceX's big solution to stop Raptor fail during Starship IFT-3. SpaceX aims to help Starship get to orbit in Flight 3 scheduled in February. I'm pretty sure that it's not surprising so much because, in the previous launch, the vehicle reached almost orbit. In addition, Artemis 3 is coming closer and closer, whereas many advanced technologies are waiting for test. Getting to orbit is nearly the most fundamental requirement and needs to be done as soon as possible. To gear up for this historical mark, upgrading both the vehicle and infrastructure is compulsory. Uh, but one of the biggest upgrades was uh, going from uh, hydraulic to electric uh, actuation of the engines. So that actually uh, saved a lot of mass and complexity. This change was applied in Ship 26 for the first time and Ship 28 will be the first ship to bring it to flight. Booster 9 was the first Super Heavy to feature this, launching on Starship Flight 2. So why does SpaceX decide to use electric actuation? First of all, as Elon said, it can reduce mass and complexity. SpaceX can remove the hydraulic pistons on the engines and the associated hydraulic systems on the vehicle side, such as the hydraulic power unit, HPU. HPU, or the gimballing system, is used to power the hydraulic thrust vector control for the Raptor engines. This HPU sits tucked inside the engine section and is surrounded by the same heavy-duty shielding that protects the engines. Once HPU disappears, the protective shielding for it is no longer present. Thanks to that, the mass and complexity are cut down significantly. Not only that, electric motors also help isolate failures of each engine from each other. This is helpful in the flight when one engine fails. It tends to lead to the failure of the others. Next, before going any further, if you found this information useful, remember to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. And now, let's go back to today's episode. Take for example the case of Booster 7 on Flight 1 which used a hydraulic thrust vector control mechanism with engine gimbals driven. During the test, B7 lost the TVC resulting in losing steering authority, which in turn led to the rocket starting in his tumbling motion. Indeed, at T plus 27 seconds, SpaceX lost communications due to some kind of energy event. And some kind of explosion happened to knock out the heat shields of engines 17, 18, 19, or 20. Despite having multiple engines down, B-7 continued its flight. Then at T plus 62 seconds, they observed damage to engine 30's shielding. The flight continued for 23 more seconds before all hope was lost, when engine 6 was lost and thus all TVC capability was jeopardized for the vehicle as a result of this. Therefore, soon after the vehicle started to tumble, the SpaceX team had to activate the flight termination system. Some questioned why the vehicle did not stage separation immediately to give Ship 24 a chance for a standalone test. Musk noted that they could have achieved that if the TVC had remained functional despite the engine failing. It got pretty close to stage separation. So, if we had maintained thrust vector control and throttled up, which we should have because we needed to compensate, we'd lost too many engines. So we needed it to, we should have throttled up the remaining engines to make up for the missing ones. If we'd throttled up the remaining engines and maintained thrust vector control, we would have made it to staging. It explains why in Booster 9, a new steering system called the electric actuator was applied. This new approach gave Elon Musk much more confidence in the results of Flight 2, I think we've got a better than 50% chance of reaching orbit on the next flight. So, I'd say that my expectation for the next flight would be more likely to reach orbit than not. 
Booster 9 is a lot easier because we use electric motors to steer the engines as opposed to hydraulic actuators, where you've got a common manifold between the hydraulic actuators, Musk said. The electrically actuated engines will be much more isolated. The hydraulic actuators ensure the ability of the rocket to continue to steer itself, even with multiple engine failures. It will be key to ensure that any single engine failures are isolated, and the company has made the rocket more robust for this purpose, he said. If you have extremely good engine isolation and an engine fails, it does not cause a failure of the neighboring engine or the stage itself, Musk added. Because then if you lose one of 33 engines, that's a 3% thrust loss. It's not a big deal. If you do not have good engine isolation, then an engine failure can domino to other engines or to parts of the stage, then you have an extremely unreliable design. After testing this system on Booster 9 and seeing it function as expected, it's time to test it on Ship 28 in Flight 3. To power the new electric TVC system, SpaceX might continue to use battery power. In 2019, Elon Musk hinted at the idea of using Tesla batteries in its Starship. It would be pretty embarrassing to use a non-Tesla battery. According to the rumor, at that time, the company could use the Tesla Model S battery, particularly the Tesla Model S played on a trial basis. However, fast forward to 2022, when the rumor was denied, Elon explained why Tesla Model S played motors could not power SpaceX's Starship. At that point, Everyday Astronaut asked on X for a good source on the weight-slash-output of the Tesla Model S Plaid motor in order to show why electric motors can't be used to power rocket engines. In his response, Musk said the turbo pumps for SpaceX's latest engine, Raptor, have over 100 megawatts of pump power. And every Starship will be equipped with 33 engines, meaning the motors will need to output 3 gigawatts of power. To put this into perspective, the Model S Plaid has three motors with around 300 kilowatts of power output, which means that to power a single Starship solely using Model S Plaid motors, you will need about 10,000 motors. This does not mean that SpaceX has given up on the idea of applying Tesla batteries for Starship. Evidently, within that time, there were transactions between SpaceX and Tesla involving battery trade. In 2019, SpaceX purchased $1 million worth of battery components from Tesla. The $1.2 million more of those components were purchased in the first quarter of 2020. Additionally, SpaceX also bought non-battery vehicle parts from Tesla in 2019 and the first quarter of 2020. The car parts were standard items out of Tesla's parts catalog, the kind any regular auto shop or Tesla service center would need to complete repairs. Musk often talks about the difficulties involved in running two companies but he also acknowledges some advantages of being active in two different industries. SpaceX aims to dramatically reduce the cost of rockets, and if there's an industry who mastered the art of making complex vehicles cheap, it's certainly the automotive industry. On the other hand, Tesla has benefited from SpaceX's expertise in high-tech manufacturing techniques such as stir welding, a technique SpaceX uses to join large sheets of metal like the ones used for the aluminum tank of their rockets, and that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.